Welcome to Croft for the fifth and sixth rounds in this year's Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Steve Roberts tops the table heading into the event, but Matt Suckling has been down in the paddock meeting some of the drivers who are looking to chase him down. Jonathan Davis from the uh, Compact Cup here this weekend at Croft for some more uh, racing. How's the season been so far for you? Um, we've built a new car for this year and we've been sort of pushing the limits with it and working out where the car's at. I had to learn a little bit about it because it's a little bit different. Um, and we've just been pushing each round, doing more testing, and this is the round that has proven to have the work, well, the work's paid off, really. You're down in the championship at the minute, but this weekend you've qualified really, really well. Yeah, yeah, so we had a little bit of a, an unfortunate round of brands. We, well, first of all, we struggled in quality at Donington, which put us back from where we feel we should have been. And then at Brands, we had a good quali, and then in race one, struggled a little bit in the wet and ended up finishing the race in the gravel trap. However, in race two, we had a good battle. Um, I could see third place, but we ended up finishing back in sixth, which was sort of, I was a little bit disappointed with sixth, but it was our best result as of yet in the BMW Compact Cup, so we couldn't be anything less than happy with that. Um, but we've come here today, and we've put it on third for race one and on pole for race two. So we're, we're really proud of that. And it's just, it's just hard work, testing and working with the car in the workshop between meetings that's really proved to uh, have helped us this weekend. And of course you raced in the championship last year. Um, so you're back this year, but the, the championship hasn't been to Croft before. So how are you getting used to the circuit? Um, so we came here for an extra track day just earlier in the week just because for me I, I needed to learn the circuit before we could then work on setup with the car um, so it, it's sort of doing that extra track day has put us one step ahead the whole weekend I feel. You must be hoping to get on the podium today maybe even the win as well. Yeah yeah so anything uh, from third upwards would be very very happy with uh, I'll be pushing to get on that top step I mean it, it's always the objective to win the race isn't it um, but we'll just have to see where we finish it'll be a tough race and I'll be pushing. Aaron Morgan racing in the uh, Compact Cup for this year. How's your season been so far? Yeah, um, so I'm racing in the Compact Cup this season. Um, I've had a, uh, not a difficult start, but um, I mean, the first time I drove uh, the Compact car was at, at the race at Brands Hatch. So um, I've managed to get some testing in um, at, at Bedford um, on Monday. Um, but, you know, still sort of ultimately learning the car and the way it handles, really. And your car's slightly different, of course. It's got a hand control. So how's that, how, how's that to use? Yeah, I mean, I... The thing is, is I, I drive with hand controls, um, but it's all that I've ever used as such because um, I learned to drive when I was 16 um, with hand controls, so I don't know any different. Um, the only thing different in my race car to uh, my road car is that it is a manual, um, and I use an auto clutch system, um, which obviously presents its own challenges, but I've managed to get used to the system pretty fairly well, I think. And you've raced a few BMWs over the years. Um, what else have you done as well previously? Yeah, um, I raced uh, in the production BMW Championship for um, four seasons. Um, it's a great, you know, great championship which provided me with some great um, founded, founding of knowledge of my racing. Um, and then I fancied a new challenge um, this year, um, so we moved. We saw the Compact Cup Series and looked, it looked very well, so it looked great. So um, this is what we came came to. Croft here today. It's uh, quite a challenging circuit by the looks of it. How do you reckon you'll go? Um, it is a challenging circuit. I've never driven here bar qualifying yesterday afternoon, um, which I, f I found fairly a little bit difficult to get used to the track and uh, in the car as well. Um, so I'm a little bit of a way down in qualifying, but hopefully today, you know, we can make amends for that and you know look to move forward some places. James Win Stanley, you're back for another year of Compact Cup racing. How's your season gone so far? Uh, it's not got, got off to the greatest start. Um, no, I did a tricky meeting at Donington um, in the wet as well. So yeah, that, that didn't really go to plan. I was I was quite a long way back. Um, I thought there were some problems with the car, but I didn't really have time to investigate before brands. Um, that was a bit better. Um, the first race was okay, and the second race um, made up quite a few places. So I think maybe I'm just out of practice. You know, haven't done, done a lot over winter. So um, yeah, it's just perhaps getting back to the, the swing of things. I think. And from two challenging circuits at Donington and Brands, you're now here at Croft for a, a new circuit. How's this going? Yeah, um, qualifying wasn't, I mean, it wasn't quite as good as I was hoping, but um, it, I really like the circuit. It's probably one of my favourites in the country, um, if not my favourite, that I've driven. Um, annoyingly, I, I lived up in the North East for 10 years and never drove it, so I, you know, I could have been a well-practised at it, but um, yeah, I don't really know it particularly well. And it's, um, it it's, takes a lot of confidence in the back section, so um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes in the, in the first lap especially. And the competition this year is really strong in, in the championship. What kind of performance and uh, people you're going to race against today? 
Um, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm smack bang in the middle of the of, of the sort of 40 odd car strong field, so um, it's going to be it's going to be pretty uh, intense in there. So, um, but the good thing is you, you know that there's going to be somebody to have a great race with. Um, you know, don't know who it can be like most rounds, but um, you know it's going to be a great race and it's going to be a great competition. A capacity grid of 40 cars lining up here at Croft for the first of two races this afternoon. Mike Tovey on pole position. Steve Roberts is alongside him. We're on board with James Gornall, number 18 on row four of the grid, and he gets away OK, but then he might be losing a bit of ground here. That's the 99 car of uh, Ben Pearson that was uh, ahead of him on the grid. Uh, but getting back ahead of him now as they head down towards Clervo for the first time. 40 cars is the maximum that this circuit can take. Are they all going to get through the first corner at Clervo? It looks as if they just about are. That's a great effort from all of the competitors. On board with Neil Roach. Oh, I spoke too soon, didn't I? A big spin for Neil Roach at the chicane number 81. Cars taking to the uh, run cut off there on the inside of the circuit at the chicane, the old pit lane. Uh, to try and force their way through. And that's Jim Benson, I think, having a moment at Tower Corner. And he rejoins the circuit. And I think everybody has just about missed him. Uh, so that was a moment for Jim Benson, who started on row seven. Neil Roach, we saw have that spin, started on the ninth row of the grid. And already the top two pulling out quite a big gap from the outside of the front row. It's Steve Roberts, the championship leader, that has the lead in the race from Mike Tovey. Uh, there you can see Jonathan Davis in his car. He's dropped down, I think, to fourth position, having started third. It looks like Paul Hinson, the former MR2 champion, has got through and into third place. Ian Jones, the ex-kart racer, he went well at uh, Brands Hatch until uh, he had engine problems in the second race. He was on the podium there in his first event. And he... Oh, is that in contact with Benson there at the complex? Well, Benson's gone spinning in any, any case. And Jones, who started on row five of the grid, has made it safely through. Jonathan Davis there losing a couple more positions because David Drinkwater goes through and the other car that goes through I think is the 47 car of Owen Hunt who didn't qualify particularly well. The man that was in third place in the championship coming into this weekend uh, is climbing through from 11th on the grid. So it's all settling down here. Qualifying was yesterday evening for these cars so it's their first time on track today. As we've mentioned, it's a 40-car grid, and uh, the circuit manager here, Mike Cantello, reckons it's the first time we've had such a large entry of cars here at Croft. So great kudos to the compact cup. James Gornley is now experiencing the Rallycross circuit there. Uh, Rallycross, a big feature of the calendar here at Croft Circuit. It wasn't quite what the former British GT champion was aiming for here today, though. Owen Hunter then, number 47. You can see he is there in fifth position now. That's not a bad effort, is it? He started 11th, we're only on the second lap of the race. Big lead, though, for Steve Roberts. Second meeting out for that new car, built by uh, Raw Motorsport. He's leading the way, then. As they go through Barcroft, Mike Tovey, it is, the West Countryman, is in second position. Oh, and that's uh, Davis there going through on the inside of 24. Richard Miles, that is, that runs out wide. It's back onto the circuit and we've lost one as well. That is number 21. Nick DeJesus is out of the race. So yellow flags in the background are waving, you can see there. That's at, uh, at the Barcroft part of the circuit. There's the leading contenders already making their way through the complex once more. Roberts it is that leads. Toby is second. Hinson third. Drinkwater is fourth. Hunter fifth. And uh, Jonathan Davis, who we heard from at the top of the programme, is in sixth position then. Over the start and finish line they go on a very pleasant afternoon now at uh, Croft Circuit. So a very warm and sunny day yesterday. Not quite such brilliant sunshine today, but so pretty good conditions for this compact cup race. And we've had pretty mixed weather so far this year. So good to have some dry running for the cars here at Croft, which is a new circuit to the majority of the drivers here. Some of them will have been here before in. Uh, different formula. Steve Roberts will have been in his Formula 4 days, I suspect. Uh, James Gornall as well. Probably not for quite some time. Now, in the background, that is Jonathan Davis throwing a move on the inside of David Drinkwater, and that had an air of inevitability written all over it because he was very late on the brakes into the corner. And unfortunately, without too much in the way of damage or incident, he has gone back out of the corner 
in the position where he started back down in sixth position but it wasn't for the want of trying there from the point of view of Jonathan Davis but it has I think lost him a bit of time because look he's lost touch now with uh, Owen Hunter and David Drinkwater up ahead of him in fifth and fourth positions respectively Drinkwater the driver in fifth place in the championship coming into this weekend championship order was Roberts, Tovey, Hunter, Gornall, Drinkwater and in sixth position Paul Henson coming into this weekend it's Roberts you can see from Tovey in uh, second place it's a bit of a traffic jam behind Paul Henson isn't it and James Gorn in the background the white car with the orange stripe now he's got some places to make up hasn't he after the, off onto the rally cross track a lap or two ago and board will go again with uh, Ian Jones out of the hairpin he goes and on to the start and finish straight which doesn't have a name here at Croft which is slightly mystifying but anyway, along the straight they go towards Clairvaux Corner. We're on board now with number 71, which is Adam Reed. He started on row 8 of the grid for this one. So it was a 20 row grid. It's James Nutbrown ahead, as you can tell it's James Nutbrown because the rear screen you will notice is missing from that car. At one point during the course of the weekend, he lost it. Not quite sure. It may have been tested because I don't think it was in for qualifying yesterday evening, in actual fact. Now, it looks to me as if Tovey is falling back into the clutches of Hinson there, but we'll look for the moment at this battle a bit further back down the order, which involves Richard Miles, it involves as well uh, Ian Jones as well, and then James Gordon, of course, trying to make his way back up the order. We go on board with Shiggy now in that number 18 car, the man that was in fourth position in the championship coming into this weekend, although already 23 points off the pace of the championship leader, Steve Roberts. Now the other car involved in that battle, just looking to see who that is. Well, for the moment we'll look at Ian Jones attacking Richard Miles there. Uh, for what I think his seventh position it, it, it's Ben Pearce, isn't it, that's gone through number 99 on the inside there at uh, Sunny Corner. Oh, and that is an off for number 55, Pavel Blatchett. The car eventually goes spinning around, but he was on the grass on the way into the corner. It's a tower. And he'll recover though from that, I would think. And board again with Adam Reed and oh now he's heading into the paddock and so too is Paul Henson that's Paul Henson ahead of us isn't it not quite sure what uh, Adam Reed's problem is something must have broken on the car but how strange that he should follow the man that was running in third place into the back entrance to the paddock Gas Shocks Compact Cup here at Crofton. Davis again launches a, a late braking manoeuvre at Tower Corner. Now we tried that early one and it didn't work. It didn't work on that occasion either. Pack has become a little bit more split up, hasn't it? Probably since we've lost Paul Hinson out of third position a little while back. Here's this train of cars, which is still being headed by, uh, by Jones, but now, well, no, it's not Jones, is it? It's uh, Miles there, I think, with Pearson. Uh, the next car through. They are sliding their way through the corner Gornall and Nut Brown in there as well turning their way through the right hander at Sydney now five cars absolutely together very good racing indeed now uh, Davis has made it ahead of Hunter as well so that has been a change out of our sight it was an unsuccessful attempt at tail but somewhere else around the lap he's made it through and there for second and third you have Mike Tovey and David Drinkwater as well uh, drink water locking up on the way into the hairpin. Meanwhile, Steve Roberts, the ex-Formula Ford champion and the champion in this championship from uh, two years ago, is pulling out in front. So that's fourth and fifth, Davis and Hunter. Hunter, the 2012 Sax Max champion. We go on board with Jones in that number 58 car, now creeping up alongside us. This is Ben Pearson, the ex Janetta Junior racer. Well, he's uh, gone pretty well so far in the championship he was in the top six last time out at Brown Hatch where as at Donington Park we ran to a three race for match two races here and today because Croft does have a bigger grid that as we've seen can accommodate the 40 cars that we have here this weekend through the chicane goes Jones Pearson then didn't make it through along the straight they go 
It's a 10 car going through, which is uh, David Whitmore of the MGA Motorsport Cars. And that is Tovey and Drinkwater. They were side by side there uh, for position going into Clairvaux Corner. That's one of the back markers, I think, that they are just putting a lap on. Didn't quite see who that was. It might be the car of James Barrett, but uh, uh, that's been a bit of a shake-up, and it's now brought Owen Hunter into the equation as well. There's yellow flags there. I think someone has pretty pulled off uh, somewhere down the straight. Now Drinkwater getting very close to the back of Tovey's car, and that leaves the door open for Owen Hunter to go through on the inside and up now into third position. Now Drinkwater was quite forcefully attacking Mike Tovey there, but it was Hunter that took the opportunity to slide through into third position. Now, can he get past Mike Tovey as well? The two West Country drivers together, followed by the Hampshireman. And David Drinkwater, who goes back through on the inside of Hunter there. That's at uh, Sunny. And Hunter back down to fourth, but they're about to go into a yellow flag zone. And oh, there's a back marker there. We'll, we'll pretend that back marker's not there because it's getting very slow. Who's that car that had spun off, uh, by the way? Um, I'm just wondering if that was Jonathan Davis. I think it may have been Jonathan Davis, who, of course, was up there challenging in the top six places, uh, has gone off, I think, into the crops, or partway into the crops, between Sunny and the complex. So uh, he has gone AWOL, unfortunately, and then we have this battle going on for second, third and fourth, which really is showing no signs of relenting. They go on to the final lap of the race now, so it's Roberts clear in the lead of the race. Tovey is second, Drinkwater is third, and Hunter is fourth. And it could be any one of these that takes P2, really. You would think they turn their way through Clairvaux Corner for the final time then on this 2.1 mile lap of this Croft circuit, not far from Darlington in North Yorkshire. Turn their way through the chicane onto the back straight, and it's parallel to the pit straight. Hunter is going to have a look, I think, on the inside of Drinkwater there as they go down towards the tower corner, but there's no room at all. He's off onto the grass. A bit of bumper goes flying. Hunter locks up and he's straight on at tower corner. Well, the problem there was that he was trying to break on the grass and uh, he now has lost any hopes of getting a podium position here. You can see the likes of Gornel and Nut Crown going through and Hunter doing his best to get back on track. He does so now, but he will be outside the top 10, I'm afraid. On board with Toby then. Sunny contact! That must have been a little tap from David Drinkwater, I think. It sent him skittering wide. Now he's managed to continue, and they're side by side, and they're door handle to door handle on the run from Sunny Corner to the left-hander at the complex. Toby's going to have the inside line here. But it's been a very feisty final few corners to this race, it must be said. Drinkwater not giving any quarter, that's for certain. Up towards the hairpin for the final time they go. Are oh, we going to get a drag race situation to the line? Meanwhile, Roberts is coming through. There he is, and he goes past the chequered flag to win once again. Five out of five for Roberts, but it's going to be virtually side by side on the run up to the line. Who gets it? And it's just Drinkwater, but it's a waggle of the finger there from Mike Tovey, and he ain't happy. He is not at all pleased with the driving of David Drinkwater there, I don't think, and he's lost out as well at the line by well, just a matter of five one hundredths of a second looking at the timing screen. So Roberts it was that uh, took the win in convincing fashion by almost eight seconds. Fifth win out of five races that he has contested this year. But it was all going on behind him. This is the view from Owen Hunter's car. He's in fourth place at the moment, heading down towards Tower Corner, trying to find a way through on the inside of David Drinkwater. But there was no way that didn't involve going on the grass. And that was well, quite lucky, really, but that didn't turn into a bigger accident as Hunter really just went straight on across the circuit at Tower Corner. But he was ahead of the, uh, the two drivers that he was battling with, and so uh, there was no further contact, fortunately. But uh, that's very frustrating for Owen Hunter, especially given his championship aspirations this season. A shake of the head there. Results then, Roberts winning by 7.86 seconds from Drinkwater and Tovey was third. Richard Miles fourth, Ian Jones fifth and James Gornall back up to sixth place in the end. Drinkwater in second place got the fastest lap as well, a 143.31. For the back, Nut Brown seventh, Wiggin eighth, John Watt ninth and Dean Blackburn it was that completed the top ten. 
But let's now hear from Matt Suckling with our top three. First of all, here's Steve Roberts. Steve, another great drive and with it, another win. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, testing on Friday was OK, but we were running all tyres all day, so we weren't sure whether we had the pace or not because a lot of the guys were looking really quick. Um, but we banged the new set of tyres on and qualifying and we we just had instant pace from lap one. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty much how the car was set up for, for the race. So we wanted to Scarpa, uh, me and Mike, um, to you know just get away from the field. So I managed to get a good start and... Um, just got away, just got our heads down, uh, and I just had really good pace from, from lap one, so just started to bang the qualifying laps in. Yeah. Drama behind those, that meant a bigger gap as well? Yeah, well, as soon as they started tussling, um, I saw I started to pull a bit on Mike, just a couple of tenths a lap, and then the drink water seemed to come through pretty well, and then them two started battling, which made it easier for me to get away. So then two thirds of the way through the race, I had a good lead, and it was just a case of trying to stop making mistakes because I, I had a mishap going into the tight section at the back and um, one of the laps where I had a, about a two and a half second lead, I nearly went off. So I was starting to try to calm things down and start concentrating again. David Drinkwater, second place in that race. You really had to work hard though to get you through, uh, your way through. Oh yeah, I think starting eighth, trying to make up any spaces. It's quite a tight track. You know, it was, it was really hard work, fighting through the pack, trying to pick off where I could. And also trying to defend as well, because I had some hard charge. I had Alvin behind me and I think John Davies, a few others. It was really hard, but i got to thank everyone at TWG, Will and Graham. The guys have been awesome. They've done a load with the car. And uh, Andy Chang as well has done an awful lot with the car. And Louis from our Aaron Reeve performance, awesome for everything they've done. And it was a move into the final corner. They got the drag to the line for you. Yeah, it was just um, Mike went in tight. I went out wide. Um, usual hairpin standards. And it was just literally trying to control the wheel spin coming out the corner uh, and I think just getting third and it, the, it couldn't have been much in it I don't know what was in it but I'm sure there was there was hardly anything Mike Tovey coming home in third place there looked like you were struggling towards the end but you definitely had the pace early on yeah we uh, went off the line Roberts jumped, uh, got the jump off us on the start which was a shame um, he started pulling away I was struggling with a little bit of rear end grip so we just seemed to go into the distance they were battling behind me to start off with which I thought this is nice get myself a nice little gap and then that cleared up and then they uh, they started to draw me in. Um, I said it looked very pushy behind a few cars with a little bit of damage. But um, yeah, unfortunately they reeled me in. Another third place, so you've got to be fairly happy with uh, the solid points. Yeah, to lose second place over the line is very disappointing. But it's another solid podium. It's another um, step closer to uh, maybe another championship. We'll see about that. Time for the second race of the weekend in the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Pole position for this one is Jonathan Davis, the grid set by the second fastest times from qualifying. Lights out, away we go on board with Aaron Morgan on the 19th row of the grid. He's got a little bit of work to do uh, from the back there, but he finished 28th out of the 40 starters in the opening race of the weekend, and that was... Uh, Someone there a little bit locked up over the curbing and goes Ben Pearson there in the number 99 car going through is not only Richard Mars but Mike Tovey as well in number 35. Now Mike was back on row four of the grid for this one. His second fastest lap time on a busy circuit last night uh, wasn't really good enough to attract a good starting position. There's Davison Roberts in the front row, Miles and Gornall on the second row of the grid. Here is Morgan and you can see there on the inset the hand controls that Aaron has to use to operate that car. Now Aaron competed in motocross from the age of 7 but an accident at the age of 15 left him disabled but uh, still enjoying his motorsport. Beauty race in the production BMW Championship switching now to the Compact Cup enjoying the new challenge as well. So there's Miles, 24, Tovey just behind him in the 35 car. Miles has been a bit of a surprise package uh, this season. He's gone pretty well in actual fact. He's uh, been in the top six on more than one occasion. In fact, three occasions so far this year. He's uh, driving his second season. And one driver who'll be very keen to go well here is Jonathan Davis after that non-finish in the earlier race. There's Owen Hunter just ahead of James Nutbrown, the former Intersteps Clio racer with Pearson again, number 99, coming out of the hairpin onto the 
start and finish straight to begin another lap of this Croft circuit side by side action up ahead meanwhile there you can see the two cars with some orange in their livery Davis and Gornall Gornall who typically seems to have one good race a weekend he was second in race three at Donington Park he was second in race two at Grand's Hatch but on the uh, the location in each of those races left himself with a bit of work to do oh and who's that uh, i think that is tove isn't it yes it is that's uh, gone uh, effectively straight over the chicane there but i don't think he really gained anything i think it was a case of he was a bit too committed there anyway oh davis has gone rather wide into uh, tower corner and looks a little bit locked up as well so it's tovey in fourth then pearson is fifth it looks to be miles in sixth position for the moment but second and third going through Gornall and Davis with, needless to say, Steve Roberts out in front here. Of course, his big rival from the past couple of seasons, Stuart Voice, not competing in 2015. And although we've had nine different drivers on the podium before this weekend, and uh, that wasn't advanced earlier on today, um, it's Roberts that's done most of the winning. And now a problem for somebody. Uh, trying to see who that might be. It's a car that's a bit further but down the order but I couldn't quite make out the number on it I'm afraid to say I think it's a car that's gone back into the race though was it possibly Ian McDonald it may have been a couple of non-starters here Paul Henson with his engine problems as it turned out from row one that's a bit of misfortune for him because he was going so well in race one and Josh Harvey as well he's had uh, issues all weekend as we watch uh, Jim Benson there getting the mirror fold in by Joe Wiggin and now uh, is that a problem it's Mark Morton isn't it it's very slow out of the hairpin there Mark who's 13th in the championship coming into this weekend and gets overtaken by the number 33 car of uh, Clive Brookson a little bit of shenanigans down there at the hairpin that lap so we started this race with 38 cars out of the 40 that turns up here to Croft Declan McDonald you can see going through multi-coloured Mac Attack racing car not quite such the exciting livery on the second uh, team car for Joe Wigan here's Roberts this is the uh, less interesting of the cameras that we're looking at in this race it's basically a blank piece of tarmac that he has in front of him a few uh, distant trees and the tyre stacks to negotiate as well but Steve Roberts making it look very easy ah now one car hiding away in the crop there was 45 which was Brendan Murphy. Now David Drinkwater, I notice, uh, hasn't completed a lap looking at our timing screen. So David Drinkwater, the man that was uh, fourth in the championship, make your pardon, fifth in the championship coming into this weekend, on the podium early on. Well, uh, he's not figuring here, so that's a, a problem for him. It might not be too much of a disappointment to some of his rivals, but David Drinkwater uh, is taking no further part in this race as well. So we've lost David Drinkwater and we've lost Brendan Murphy so far in this race. The Gas Shocks Compact Cup here at Croft, round six of the championship. As we look at uh, Nut Brown and Hunter doing battle uh, in the lower half of the top ten. Oh, big moment from Tovey. It might have been that he had some contact from Ben Pearson. And he's got that all sorted out now. That was uh, down at, what, well, between Clervo and Hawthorne, I think, wasn't it, that uh, that, that incident occurred. Now, Tovey, as a result of that, has lost a few places, and he'll not be happy with that. He will have some work to do. There's a 71 car of Reed. Going through the orange car. of cars in this uh, compact cup this is with quite a similar livery now there is the 34 car of uh, John Watt John who as far as the championship was concerned was 13th coming into this weekend there's Brendan Murphy uh, enjoying his vantage point from the uh, the middle of the farmer's field which is on the infield here at Broft Circuit that's be harvested a couple of months I think Brenton will make it out before then really is a congested circuit uh, with so many cars competing the compact cup this weekend more cars in this race than i think some events have in the whole meeting here at croft so the local spectator marshall was very appreciative of the 
big grids provided by the Compact Cup. We've had 40 or more entries every round so far this year, so it really is the envy of many other championships on the British club racing roster. As we watch that Allied Mobility car of uh, Aaron Morgan making his way through, which will improve on the 28th position that he had in race one. of the MGA cars making its way out of the corner there, who that is Nick Jesus. With a couple of cars going side by side in his wake now. Oh, someone's sending a bollard flying there, I think. I don't think it was one of the front runners, um, but certainly Hunter and Nut Brown going through, chasing after that Ian Jones car as well. Blue flags waving to that back marker to indicate that the quicker drivers are coming through but I'm sure the driver will be all too well aware of that. There's Declan McDonnell, the former Mighty Mini and low cost champion. Second season of racing in the Compact Cup but it's not yet enjoyed the levels of success that he had in those of the championships a few years ago. Hunter looking like he might be trying to make up a place here on uh, Jones. It's sunny. A try it's anyway. and Jones goes wide there that allows Hunter to slot his car through on the inside for the second part of the corner and it looked like Nut Brown might try and follow through meanwhile Steve Roberts update for fans of his the accountant is well out in front of this race through the complex through a thug of smoke kicked up by, uh, by locking tyres and brakes at uh, that part of the circuit more locking up going on as well. I think that was Jones who lost, I think in the end, only one position. It didn't look as if Nut Brown was able to follow him through in the end, so Hunter uh, took advantage, but uh, it didn't look like that Nut Brown was able to, so I think uh, Hunter for the moment is in fifth place. No, make that sixth place because Tovey is ahead of him. He's in fifth looking at our screens. Oh, big moment there. It's Jones doing him the power of no good once again. More Tovey pushing hard, but out of shape, coming through Hawthorne and towards the chicane. Those really are trying to find the limits here at Croft. Actually, some of the drivers in all the classes saying that they don't think there's a lot of grip here with the Croft circuit. But what they do like is the uh, great range of uh, different types of corner we have here. Some very quick corners, a hairpin, you've got the tight chicane, a real mix of corners. It's a great driver's track, this uh, circuit at Croft. And a very good infield layout created uh, from the uh, previously triangular circuit that operated initially back in the 1960s. Sunny corner, one of the highlights of the lap. Pretty quick right-hander. Quicker at the second apex generally than at the first. Hunter trying to find a way through here. This is past Mike Tovey. So again, it's the two West Country drivers together. Tovey a little bit of a different line to Hunter into the corner. It looked like the door was being held open for him, but Hunter unable to make that work. So you've got Tovey, you've got Hunter, you've got Jones and Nutcrown all together there. They are in fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth positions. Still Roberts, Gornall, Davis and Pearson, the top four cars. And they're all fairly well spread out, it must be said. On to the last lap they go then. Once we'll get any shake-up in this battle for fifth and backwards at the moment. Tovey, having started, uh, what, seventh on the grid? Well, I guess fifth is an OK kind of result if you can cling on to it. But Owen Hunter's probably not going to let him, is he? Because they're overlapping now as they make their way through Hawthorne. I didn't quite see how that resolved itself, unfortunately, as Roberts makes his way out of Tower Corner. Now, now, it's not been as dominant in this race as he was in race number one because Gornall much closer to him. So while it uh, looks fairly quiet and serene towards the front, but he is at least having to use his mirrors in this race because uh, he can't really relax. Gornall within a second of him in this final lap of the race through Sunny for the final time then. So only about a third of the lap to go. And head on to this straight between Sunny and the complex. The left hand element first. Gornall in the background, the 2003 uh, Bark Formula Renault champion, the 2008 
British GT champion in the Dodge Viper. I think Roberts has just about got enough in hand now. This is the eighth race of the season with the sixth round of the championship due to the three race format that we've had. And Roberts has won all six of his races. Shimmy can make it to the flag in front. I think he's going to check a flag, he's made ready. Check the flag goes out. Steve Roberts, six out of six for this season. And he's just a little bit pleased about that. Still battles to be resolved further back down the order. And that's Toby who is going to cling on for fifth place from Hunter and Jones. Not around a bit further back in the end. And Loney on the final lap in eighth place. It's going to be McDonald ninth and Simon Roach in tenth place. But uh, that was a close run thing with John Watt as well. So Roberts it is that takes the victory here at Croft. And next time the championship is in action is his home circuit of Alton Park. Who knows what he can do there. Let's have a look at how the uh, finishing order was confirmed then. And unfortunately, we had an exclusion in the form of number 24, Richard Miles. His car was found to be underweight. So it was Roberts that took the win from Gornell and Davis, his first podium in the compact cup with Pearson, Tovey and Hunter completing the top six. Gornell getting the fastest lap of the race, but he didn't get the lap record away from David Drinkwater. Completing the top ten, you've got Ian Jones, James Nutbrown, Declan McDonnell and Simon Roach. Steve Roberts, another victory today. Slightly po uh, different podium this time around, but you're still the man at the top of it. Yeah, well, that's how I want to keep it. But yeah, that was a tough race. Um, James was so fast. Like we, had, we, we, we pretty much had the same pace. I think he had a little tussle with Jonathan to start with. So that gave me the gap again. Um, but I think he was clawing me in slightly. Uh, and unlike the first race where they really started to tussle, everything sorted itself out. So I just had James with his full beam on me in my mirrors all race. So I just had to hang it out every lap. And every lap was like a qualifying lap. There's nothing else to give. So, But I think we're both in the same situation. So it just ebb and flow because either of us would make a, an odd mistake now and again. It's nice to see that you were challenged that time round. As you said, Jiggy was right there with you, which is uh, good to see. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a great race. You know, they're, they're the ones you like to win. But I mean, you know, the, the first one wasn't easy. Don't get me wrong. It's just Mike and uh, the rest of the field really got stuck into each other, which allowed me to break away. Whereas this one was a bit different, where it's follow the leader. And I was the leader at that point, And it was just a case of keeping it on the island. But I really had to push every single lap. James Gornall, second place there. What a race for you, really closing down Steve Roberts. Yeah, we were, we were quite evenly matched, unfortunately, so I couldn't really catch him too much. Every now and again, I could see he made a small mistake and I caught him, but then I'd maybe make a small mistake. It's just, uh, just one of those things. I suppose if you got passed into second a little bit earlier, you may have had more chance of catching him. Yeah, maybe he stretched a lead on lap one, certainly, and then uh, that is pretty much where it looked like it stayed for the rest of the race. So I need to try and make it easier for myself by qualifying better now instead of buckling a wheel on the first lap. And uh, first race was a bit dismal as well when I hit the tyres on my own going through the chicane. Have you enjoyed Croft today? I like Croft. I haven't been here for 11 years, but I do enjoy it. Great job. Well done, James. Thank you. Jonathan Davis, managing to get yourself on the podium. Great drive to third place. Yeah, it's been a fantastic weekend. We uh, struggled in the last race, brakes failed, um, but that's just due to temperature and it's the first time we've run the car as hard as we are. Um, it's been a fantastic job by AW Track Sport and my dad to work together to get the car here for this round. Um, and it's just been wonderful things coming together and producing results. Um, hopefully one of many podiums and we'll be pushing harder in the later in the season. You tried your best as well to keep Jiggy behind you, but you just had a little bit more speed today. Yeah, yeah, he had a little bit more down the straight than me. Um, it's just one of those one of those things at the end of the day, I couldn't hold him back. Um, and it, I was best not to fight him, to be honest. It's a, it was a great result for the both of us. Well, this is what all of that means for the point standings now, with six rounds gone. It's Steve Roberts on 301, Mike Tovey 276, then James Gornall and Owen Hunter only just behind. But then there is a 40-point gap very nearly. Simon Roach in fifth position, David Drinkwater completing the top six. Well, that's all we've got time for here at Croft. The next round of the championship is at Alton Park at the beginning of July. We'll pick up the action again at Silverstone at the end of August. But for now, from all of us here, it's goodbye.